Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I thought I'd do a quick little picture show of uh, my Badger 5 install. Um, it's the Badger 5, this uh, big uh, turbo inlet pipe that comes from the UK. You can see here is the OEM uh, rubber pipe and then here's the, uh, the Badger, much larger intake pipe. Uh, there's a lot of good videos on the right-hand drive cars, but uh, I thought I'd do one on the left-hand drive. This is uh, on my Roadster uh, BEA engine type, left-hand drive USA. Uh, mine's a 225 Roadster. Uh, so just thought I'd do um, something that's they're a little bit different. Some of the connections are a little different, and uh, it's actually a little bit harder to do. So the first thing you want to do is you have to remove the charge pipe, this uh, silver charge pipe, just to get it out of the way. Because what you're going to have to do basically to get to the charge pipe um, clamp is pretty much lay on top of the engine. So here's the charge pipe removed right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to reach down uh, in this area here uh, to get to that turbo um, clamp. Now, um, once you have that removed, what you can do, or what I did, was I started to remove um, all the things that were attached to the OEM uh, tip or the turbo inlet pipe. So on mine, I have this weird little PCV one-way uh, valve, like a little check valve on top of my OEM. So I removed that. Um, you may also have, uh, for the USA, there's an EVAP. Uh, line right here. Now mine, I removed my EVAP, so I, I just have mine capped off. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then you want to remove your N75 um, and also the hose be, uh, that's attached to the N75 that goes to the wastegate down below. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, and also the PCV, the hockey puck that you see right here. So here are all the, uh, all the pieces um, attached to the OEM have been removed now. This was your hockey puck over here. Here was that little, um, little uh, one-way valve for the PCV. Here was uh, basically, this is typically your uh, diverter valve right here. And then also the N75 right here. So those are all removed. Now, once you have everything removed up top, there are two um, places you want to remove uh, the N75 hose. You can see the hose right here, um, the N75 hose. Once you disconnect it from the back of the N75, it actually feeds through these two ports right here on the side of the OEM tip. So I was able to pull the pipe through this first one here. And then what I did was I cut a little slice right here in the bottom one because it's really hard to get to. So I cut a little slice in it and then actually pop that hose out. You want to make sure that that hose is disconnected from both of these places here because when you pull it out, you don't want to put any stress on that hose because the other end is attached to the, um, to the wastegate. All right, so here's uh, pretty much the hard part. Uh, now for uh, basically you've got to uh, basically lay on top of the engine and reach down in here to get to that uh, turbo inlet clamp um, that's clamped right onto the turbo. It takes a, a seven millimeter socket. Um, you got to reach down in sort of blind like and feel around and got to loosen that, loosen that uh, clamp. Once you have that clamp all loosened up, now what you want to do is remove that, um, that OEM tip. And it's a little bit harder than you would imagine uh, because you can see right here in that, this is the turbo pipe right here. And on the end of the turbo itself, there is a little channel. And there's a little raised portion on the pipe that actually sits down in that channel right here. You can see it. And it locks that in. So it's hard to get off. So some guys use rope, some guys use dog leash, um, whatever is handy. What I did was I took some rope, uh, put it down as far as I could on the tip down here, uh, making sure that I'm not 
you know, around any other wires or connections or anything like that. You can feed it out the wheel well right here. And then basically once you've got it out, then you can give it a couple of tugs. Um, and it took, took a couple of good tugs for me to get it off. Um, so it does take a little bit of doing to get it. So now what you might also want to do is try to fit um, this tip in there. Um, I ended up cutting about a half inch of material off the end that connects to the, the uh, turbo inlet itself. Um, some guys have cut as much of an, as an inch off. The idea behind that is to try to um, get that tip to sit as close as you can to the turbo uh, and get it away from the brake, brake lines and the brake mechanisms. That's the hard part on the left-hand drive vehicles because they are uh, basically, uh, they sort of get in, in the way. So and we'll take a look at that later too. So I cut about a half inch off. I wanted to make sure that I had still enough, um, enough room to put a clamp on. This is actually the piece that I cut off. You can see right here. Uh, and I had, uh, I want to make sure that I had a good flat spot to still put on that clamp. So here's the, uh, here's with the tip out, the OEM tip out. You can see where you're going down in here. Here you can just see a little bit of the turbo inlet right here. And then here also you can see the brake line that's going to be getting in the way a little bit. It's going to rest up against the brake uh, the, the, or the tip itself. So um, the more you can get that um, tip back in here, the more it'll be away from this brake line itself. All right, so here I have the, um, the tip in. Um, and remember, uh, what you can do is try to slide that down in there. And since it is silicon, it does sort of slide past everything pretty well. Uh, make sure you've got your clamp on there. Once you put it down in there, you'll have to have it pretty loose or you won't be able to get it on the, the uh, turbo itself. So place it down in. You can sort of uh, put it down in sideways. And then once you get down in there, then you can turn it and uh, feed it into the turbo itself. Um, what you can also do is, uh, if you have the car jacked up pretty far, you can get underneath and look uh, pretty much past the subframe, the front subframe, and you can actually look up and see where this turbo uh, inlet is. So you can sort of double check where you have your clamp and also, um, and also how far you have it on the turbo itself. Um, so you want to check that just to make sure that's the only place you can really visually see it. Now, the other thing I found out is you want to make sure um, this tip is as far uh, back towards the windshield as possible. The farther you have it back, um, the less it'll rest on this brake line right here. So again, um, you have to uh, bear hug the car, basically, and uh, tighten up that clamp again. And here, uh, here's my tip in. What I did was I used a little bit of a small piece of rubber and put in here. There is, uh, it is uh, sitting against this brake line and also this mechanism down here, part of the brake setup. So I put a very thin piece of rubber just to keep things from rubbing and hopefully that'll protect it. We'll, we'll see how that works. I'm not sure. So now what we've got is we've got the tip in again, you got a bear hug, tighten up that clamp down in there. And again, you can get underneath and actually see where your clamp is and how far the turbo is, is on there uh, before you actually clamp it on. But now you got to figure out how to put all the hose connections in. Some of them are, are pretty much the same, but being this is a made for a right-hand drive or a UK operation uh, vehicle, it uh, some of the things are a little bit different. So what I did first was I had uh, put in my DV connection, my diverter valve. Now this connection here is the same size as the OEM diverter valve. Now I have mine uh, relocated to the cold side. So I just have a stainless steel uh, 90 going in here, but you can on yours, if this is where you have your DV, you can connect your DV right here. 
The next easy thing is your N75. Basically, that's the side hose, and it fits in pretty much just like the OEM. It's a good fit, uh, proper size. You can basically twist this a little bit just to make it fit a little bit better. Um, and don't forget, uh, if you pulled your hose off, this back hose right here, make sure to remember to put that hose back on. This is the hose that goes back down to the wastegate down below. All right, the, uh, one of the more difficult things, at least for me, was the PCV, the hockey puck. Here you can see this is where um, my hockey puck was. This is the original hose that actually went into this cavity here. It's a lot larger than the uh, badger is. So I just took this out. I'm not going to be able to reuse that at all. So the OEM connection is a lot larger than the badger. So what I did was I used um, their uh, supplied 90 degree hose um, connection. Um, I used the 90 degree and what I did um, since the um, uh, PCV, the hockey puck, is a pretty large base to plug into, I wanted to use a 19 millimeter hose. So what I did was I forced on a little bit of uh, extra rubber hose that I had right here. You can see this is a rubber hose right here. And then that made this a little bit larger so that when I put my 90 onto this, I could clamp both of those together and it made a pretty good fit. So here you can see my 90. Here is the 90 going into, this is the badger tip right here. You can see the 90 fits nicely into this lower connection here. Here's my uh, little rubber piece right here. You can see here and then my 19 millimeter right here. Now I had two uh, different PCV uh, hockey puck valves. One that I had uh, purchased as a replace came and it was a smaller base basically so I used this one and it fit very, very nicely into my 19 millimeter hose so I used it. All right here you can see the um, hockey puck installed here here's the hockey puck here's the 90 down here you can also see the 90 down here um, this is my 19 millimeter hose going up now I have a uh, oil catch can so mine's going to be a little bit different maybe than yours um, but this is basically how I ran mine. So again, um, I said in the beginning, I had this uh, little uh, PCV check valve here. And if you have a BEA engine type, you're going to have one of these also. Um, if you don't, then you probably won't have this at all. Uh, what I used, there's, there's really um, fewer connections than my OEM hose on the Badger. So what I did was I removed my EVAP uh, system and I had basically had it capped off. So this is the hose that was basically used for the EVAP connection. So I removed it from the OEM tip and I used it to connect this, uh, this uh, small check valve. Here's the check valve here. Here's the back connection. It fits very nicely in here. I extended the hose a little bit. And then I put this um, little check valve there and you can see it down here in the bottom uh, picture right here next to the N75 right here. Now, if you, um, if you still have your EVAP in there, the only thing I can think of is maybe you can put a T off the N75 connection and then attach this little valve uh, with your, uh, in conjunction with your N75, it, that might work also. All right, so the last thing uh, you really need to do is uh, sort of reshape or cut the inlet of this big badger. It has a tendency to uh, face a little bit more forward to the, to the, toward the front of the car and also a little bit up. Uh, so I put a wire tie, you can see wire tie I put on here to try to figure out how I want to cut that. And you can see how I sort of uh, set it up so that this, my math would sit in there properly. So it would uh, basically face it down a little bit farther 
and then back towards the windshield. Um, so you do have to do a little bit of adjustment there on that uh, on that badger, just depending on basically um, you know what kind of filter and what kind of setup. I mean, you might be using the OEM filter. I'm not sure. Probably not if you're putting the badger in there. Um, you're probably just using a big cone filter, something like that. So here it is all finished out. I still have some trimming, uh, some uh, finishing to do on the, uh, on the uh, inlet of the tip so I can get my math to sit properly. But here you can see everything connected now. Here's the N75. Here's my hose for the diverter valve. You might have your diverter valve going right in here. Here's my hockey puck right here. And back in here is that smaller, uh, uh, smaller little valve. So that's how I did mine. Um, again, this is a left-hand drive vehicle, you know, uh, USA um, operation basically, which is a little bit different because uh, mainly because you have your uh, brake reservoir here and all this gear down in there. It's a lot harder to get to and a little bit tighter to fit everything in. So I hope that helps. Um, thanks for watching. Take it easy, guys.